how does this work for an average business owner um, here in Kelowna? I own a business. How do I make this program work? Well, it's a really good question. Uh, it works like any other commercial trade exchange or what are commonly known as barter networks or uh, barter exchanges. Mm -hmm. The business owner can activate a private account in the sovereign exchange. Um, he can build his profile once he's, his account is authorized. He can build his profile using his dashboard or his back office access on the internet to link his website, describe his business, and then list his services, his products or services, for sovereigns. In doing so, he engages with an entirely new audience. He finds new customers. Mm. He builds his network, he earns referrals, and when and if settlement uh, is made, that settlement is in the form of sovereigns, which are, again, representations of grams of silver. So before he settles, he has to check the website for the sovereign exchange rate. Today, for example, it's at $1.06. So if the landscaper is making a $1,000 sale, mm -hmm. uh, he would divide by 1.06, and post 945 approximately sovereigns in his account. Now his 945 sovereigns can be spent with any other member of the network. He can go to the dentist. The dentist and there are dentists in our exchange are offering better than cash prices. We've got a dentist in Burnaby who offers 25% less for sovereigns than he does for cash. Mm -hmm. We've got a winemaker in West Kelowna who offers 30% less for sovereigns than his best cash price. These two business owners believe that the price of the precious metals are going higher and that they can make back that discount as, as the prices increase in dollar terms. So it could be that the sovereign exchange rate is $2 or $3 with the price of silver at $75 or $100 an ounce, but his sovereign still have, uh, his sovereign account, so there's the same number of trading units in it, okay. but he's got $1,800 or $2,700 worth of purchasing power with his 945 sovereigns. Okay, so how it works is that I have an account with 200 sovereigns and it equals whatever the market value is of the metal on that particular day. That's so right, of a gram it, it of could, silver. It could be when gold is up, it goes a lot higher. Gold comes down, it sinks a little bit. So it depends on how it is daily. Right. Um, so I've got to make sure that when I'm paying, the, the people on the site, are they saying that it's $1,000 for dental work or are they saying it's 145 sovereigns for dental work? Well, that's a good question. Most of the members on the site um, will list their dollar price and then offer a discount of anywhere from 10 to 50% for sovereigns. Oh, okay. Okay, so again, if the root canal is 1000 in this case, it would be $750. That's the discounted price mm -hmm. divide by $1.06, the sovereign exchange rate, and the sovereign settlement would be around 700 sovereigns. Okay. So do you notice that as the markets fluctuate in regards to what metal is being traded at, do you notice that there's a surge in people purchasing different things on certain days, or is there ever a surge of people making different offers on days based on what the market is doing? Well, it's, again, a great question. Uh, the more astute members are watching the sovereign exchange rate and purchasing when it's higher and, uh, and getting more value, dollar value, for the same gram of silver. The sellers would like the opposite to happen. They'd like to be selling when the sovereign exchange rate is lower mm -hmm. so that they're getting more sovereigns for the same amount of dollars. So it is a bit of a push-pull. Um, as the silver price rises, though, the sovereign exchange rate rises with it. And in doing so, it guards or protects the purchasing power of the member who has sovereigns in his or her account. So it's a, it's a great way to connect with a new audience. It's a great way to expand your, 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 um, your network, meet new people, earn new referrals, mm -hmm. and in this case, get paid with money that has uh, intrinsic value. A gram of silver can be weighed, it can be measured, and it's the same around the world. Uh, today, we're, we live in an environment where 
there is nothing behind a dollar or a euro or a peso. They trade against each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, it wasn't always the case, but it's been the case in this current paradigm that we're in, this boomer paradigm, if you will, that there is no backing to the currency. And uh, I use the analogy sometimes of a home builder mm -hmm. who um, is trying to build you a house, but the measurement, uh, the yardstick, if you will, changes from day to day. So imagine trying to have a house built when a yardstick today is 35 and a half inches, uh, tomorrow it's 37 and a quarter inches. You wouldn't get a very solid house and you wouldn't get very straight corners. So in this case, that's, that's the way our currency system works today. Uh, it, it, it fluctuates every day and for people yeah. doing international trade, it's very cumbersome to budget and make forecasts and uh, uh, look into the future when you don't know what a dollar is going to be worth. You don't know what a euro is going to be worth. Mm. So how do you forecast or make a, a, a quotation to someone two or three or five years in advance and guarantee those prices when we have this constant inflation, this constant erosion of the purchasing power of a dollar? Mm -hmm. It's virtually impossible. When we use grams of silver or ounces, or, uh, ounces of silver or ounces of gold, uh, it's much easier because uh, this, is, this is money that can be weighed, can be measured, has a 6,000 year history as money. Mm -hmm. And if you look back over history, you'll find that all great empires have, have gotten big and strong, um, in part because they've used metal as money. The Spaniards in the 16th, 17th century uh, had a Spanish uh, coin, a Spanish uh, silver dollar. They called it a dollar, I believe. Uh, the Spanish Empire got big, and uh, in part because you know their their military could count on being paid in something real, mm -hmm. and they would fight for it. Uh, towards the 18th, 19th century, we had the English Empire got big and grew in Australia and, and in New Zealand and throughout Africa and here in Canada even, and their their money throughout that time was silver. It was called a pound, mm -hmm. and it was something that could be weighed and it could be trusted. Uh, subsequent to that, we had the American Empire, which in my opinion is, is on its last breath, but for 150 years on a silver and gold standard, uh, there was virtually no inflation of the, of the money supply. Prices were constant for, for, for the most part through that 150 years, and there was no income tax because the government wasn't paying interest to the private bankers and then forced to tax the people to cover those debt servicing costs. So America got big and strong as well on a gold and silver standard. In fact, the definition of a dollar in the Coinage Act, is Section 8 of the Constitution, I believe it is, is still 371 and a half grains of silver, 37 and a half grains of gold. Uh, most politicians, most people will, will laugh and mock at those definitions or mock those definitions, but in fact it is the case that, that uh, money, a dollar, is still defined in the U.S. Constitution as silver and gold. Interesting.